Cell versus soft shading. What's the difference and which one should I use? I'm going to show you how to render shadows in a couple of different ways. Rendering in art terms is how you finish the art by bringing flat images to life with the illusion of light and shadow. Cell shading is a stylized way of shading with hard edges and simplified values. You can see cell shading in cartoons, comics, and animation. This is how I tend to shade my work. Soft shading is more of a realistic approach with soft blends and more values. It's how traditional artists may render a still life or a detailed landscape that looks like a photograph. In this video, I'll show you my techniques on both types of shading with some common textures like plants, rust, and glass. So rendering textures, we've got a few to go over. So plants have a few ways. I feel like plants are one that like you always see because they're like, oh, there's a really easy way to do this. Or it's like something that everybody is like, oh, I hate rendering plants because it takes so long. It really doesn't have to. I'm going to go over a few ways you can do it. Start with your darkest values first. Let's say we just have the general silhouette of a bush. Shift your color. If you say you're in this green area only, if you start with your darkest and then only use this green and just only get lighter with this green, sure it works, whatever, but it isn't as like lifelike. So say we started off with this green that's closer to blue, and then we start to move closer to yellow as we get lighter. This feels more alive, right? This has more color to it. This feels a little bit colder. Generally people do this, they hue shift, that's what it's called, a hue shift to make it feel warmer. So this is more cold, hue shift. So that's what I'm gonna do with this one. So let's say that we start with this general shape and now I start to pick out more details. Of course, I'm still keeping them as general blobs. And then again, hue shift, get lighter in color. I'm gonna make my brush smaller as well because now what we want is to make our details just a little bit more noticeable. Now we're focusing more on actually getting details in there rather than just full silhouettes. So we're gonna pick out certain leaves, pick out certain areas that we wanna highlight. All right, so it's not really one big blob anymore. Now we're starting to poke out leaves. We're starting to poke out things like that and get even lighter. And that makes a nice kind of very warm rendered sort of work on the leaf. So you can work on something like this. Depending on how much lighting you want, you can change how much light hits the bushes. You can change how big the leaves are. You can change whatever you want. This is just like a general tip. Very generally though, digital painters won't render out a bush this much. They'll choose like maybe one or two greens. Let's say that we've got like kind of just a generalized sky back here. And then maybe they'll have like get in the general shape there and then maybe get like a little bit darker and bring that in or a little bit lighter. And then that's it. Like they won't really do too much with it because if you add too much detail, then you're already doing too much. So it tends to look fine just like that. If you want to make it lighter, you want to make it darker, whatever. <laughs> like that's up to you. That's the rendered version. This is more if you're going with painting. Another fun thing, if you really want to do nice generalized bushes is if you get this like general shape in there. What's nice is a textured brush as well. Never use a hard round if you're going to do something like this. Notice how like textured and kind of chalky my brush looks. It's nice to get that sort of look in there. And then maybe add some slightly generalized color in there. Layer it in, work it in with like opacity by pressure. And then maybe if you want to add some fun little leaves, just add a few on top, especially if it's just in the background and you're not worrying too much about it. Like that's good enough too. If it's a background element, don't worry about it. Another really good thing is like if you have like trees, say if we've got like the base of a tree, something like this, we've got little moss growing on it. Again, I'd pick my green, probably something like this and just very lightly draw on small little circles, a moss on top, let it blend like that. And then if I really want it, I can add little leaves, circular leaves that look like this on the edges too. My rule of thumb is generally to always lean your greens onto yellow by comparison to blue. The blue tends to look too cold and too unrealistic. So that's one way that you can think of it. This is a bunch of different blurry sort of foliage. Grass actually works the same way. Say that we've got a sky like this. Usually what I do is like, I work with um, aerial something, aerial perspective, but I let it get farther away and more blue because this is just what happened. It won't stay perfectly green the whole time as it gets farther away. This is very, very quick as well. I would not render this like this exactly. And then I wouldn't just automatically do this the whole time. I wouldn't use the grass texture for the entire section. I would use it in very sparse, very small areas and make sure the grass is going in different directions. That sort of thing. But yeah, I like to add atmospheric perspective into there. 
the grass blades, sh there should be more of them, despite them being smaller as you get farther into the distance. Try not to make it so it's like grass all the time. It's better to make it if you have grass sometimes. And this feels a little bit more natural. Sometimes you'll have a grass brush and you'll see people just like rake the grass brush across the area just completely. Don't do that. It doesn't look great. I'm just gonna go over moss one more time. Wait, let me use a rock. So if we have moss, you just kind of very gradually blur that into there. You notice that it's a very, very similar value right now. So I'm going to start to bring it up. Moss always looks better if you lean it towards yellow as well. Don't lean it towards blue because, you know, what two colors make up green, guys? It's yellow and blue. If we lean our greens more to yellow, it makes greens feel more natural. Let's talk about non-painting. Let's talk about just cell shaded. So cell shading. So let's say that I drew in a bush really quick. Our shadows, we're going to go back to the cold. We're going to lead to blue. When we have this kind of shape here, I'm going to pick my shadow color. It's a little too dark. I still want to link to blue though. Make sure that we always hue shift. Even if you don't go cold shadows, warm light, you always want to hue shift regardless. You just pick your light source and say mine is just coming straight from above. And make sure that your shadow, when you're cell shading, matches the texture that you want for the bush. This applies to everything. If you are making a shadow, your shadow is a shape, not a line. Your highlights are a shape, not a line. So make sure that when you are adding in your shadows, it isn't just straight across. It isn't just in one way or the other. You want to make sure that you are going in multiple directions. You're matching it to the shape of the leaves, that sort of thing, right? And your shadow will look great. Really easy way to do it. Lighting as well. Match it to the shape of the bush. And you've got a very easy cell shaded bush. You could even make it fun and color in the lines where the highlight is. And that gives it a little bit more depth. You can even make the highlights like a little bit more in depth, right? You can start lighter here, get a little darker as you come down forwards, right? And get even darker as you hit the shadow. Never forget any hue shift. So the line isn't as intense. It's still lined, but it's not as intense as before. Let's switch this. Let's say, what would it look like if we made the lighting cold? If you have like your light spots, you want them to be more cold. You can 100% do that. So you can totally have a cold light. If you are having a cold light, this means you have a warm shadow. This is what you're supposed to do. If you have a warm light source, that means your shadow will be cold. If you have a cold light source, it means your shadow will be warm. That's a very simple principle that anybody can remember. But yeah, that's the easiest way to do celled bushes, celled foliage. Same deal with grass, same deal with all that fun jazz. Let's say that we have like moss on the side of the tree. When you're drawing in, moss as well. Make sure that these little bumps are small because moss doesn't look like a giant cloud, right? They're small. It's small little patches. If you'd like to support the channel in the creation of free arts education, become a member on Patreon. I just color my tree in really quick. All shadows and highlights can be done very, very quickly with, um, what's it called? Multiply layers and stuff like that. And like soft light slash hard light slash overlay layers. You can do that really, really quickly. Notice how when I do moss, I kind of add this little speckled bit here. Again, we're shading for texture. We're adding lighting for texture. And with cell shading, you only have like max, like maybe two or three different values to work with. So you've got to be careful with how you draw stuff on. So just adding this little speckled effect can help a lot. The moss already looks very different from the way that the bush does. And that's just because of the way that we shaded it. Ooh, rust. Rust is tough. So rendered and celled. Well, first of all, let's look up a reference. That should always be your first step is looking up what you want. Take a look at what we have here. We've got a lot of these like reddish browns blending in here. Notice that a lot of it is speckled. It's not just brushed on, it's speckled, especially on these chains. Look at that, a lot of dots. A lot of that sort of thing. Here you can see it chipping away like the surface of the metal and you can see it kind of bleeding into color of the metal, right? So we're taking in this information. We're saying, okay, what am I looking at here? What can I understand? What am I looking at with this one? So with this information now, let's say we've got our little thing here. Let's pick my brush. I'm going to choose this one because we saw a lot of speckled stuff. So I'm going to stick with that. So what we saw was a lot of this rust texture bleeding into the metal, right? So I'm gonna start with that. Notice how subtle that gradient is. You can only see the difference really because we have this other pure gray one on the side. I kind of want the broken in sort of rust. So what I'm gonna do now is now that I have this sort of bleeding in how I saw it was it was almost there was this hard break where the rust started to show up, right? So I'm like, okay, now what I want is to figure out where I want this metal to be rusting away. Some of it was kind of cracking here too. If you're really bad with doing natural 
natural cracks. When you first start drawing cracks, easy way to do it is if you take your pen, put it in your non-dominant, and try and draw a straight line. That makes you really nice natural cracks, really nice natural lightning. So both of those work beautifully. And then there are some areas with like slightly brighter, stronger looking rust that peek through and some deeper rust that's there. Half of learning to draw is observation, understanding what you're looking at and not just drawing from imagination. Say, okay, I know what this thing is. I'm going to Google it. What am I supposed to do with this now? And then I also saw a lot of deep speckly bits. Now I'm not really one to do that off the top of my head. So let's pick a brush that I think would work. I have a fun little speckly brush here that will work just nicely for this. Especially if I'm working with concept, this will make it a lot easier. And then I'll go back in, pick out some details that I want to re-render again. So let's say that we've got like some rust spots that I want to focus on, bring out a little bit until I'm content enough. And then maybe we've got some, if I go back in here, maybe we've got some rust kind of falling here. Kind of got that funky-ish texture. Celled, this is a little bit easier. Okay, I should have chosen the lighter one here. So I'm gonna switch to a lighter. Usually any cell shaded anything looks better if you have like a little bit of rendering. So I'm gonna try with no rendering, but it usually looks better if you do. So let's say we render that in just a little bit. If we don't want it to be really smooth, I could just render it slightly. And then a fun little trick that I've seen people do is like add in just like little spots like this. And that gives like the idea of rusting almost. It's the same like way that people render out malachite. It's that same kind of deal. And then like just add in some other speckles within some of the darkest areas. Try to make it as random as you possibly can. There, rust. <laughs> glass is funky. I struggle with teaching glass because I swear I have a different method for glass every single time. <laughs> So again, what we do first is we look up our reference. And we notice that when we have glass, sometimes our glass has colors to its edge, right? Sometimes it doesn't, but more often than not, it does. Very, very reflective, very, very smooth looking glass. Especially if we have it with like a drinking glass, it'll distort what's behind it. And we'll see a little bit of those colors kind of moving around going on back there. We'll see it kind of distort an image because it's a bent piece of glass. If we've got straight glass though, we can see directly through it, but it will always have a little bit of a reflection going on. So let's take a pane of glass. Let's just take one of these like funky little panes of glass that are like see-through with a slight tint of green to them. I'll do this in a couple ways. I'll say that like we have one that's like fine and then one that's like broken because I know that every artist wants to know broken glass. So let's say we took this. The thing with glass is that it'll look very very similar rendered to like celled because it is a very hard-edged kind of thing. So let's say we've just got a piece of glass going on here. So we've got like a pane of glass. So let's say we start got something like this. Notice that I used white to highlight the edges. This is because that when you have glass, more likely than not, that edge will be white because of the highlight that's going on, especially if I've got a mid-tone for the background. So let's say that I've got that white little pane of glass. We're getting very Minecraft pane of glass for a second here, but let's say that it is that sort of like deep turquoise. So I'm gonna take that color, bring that over to the edges here. I have no theory behind glass. <laughs> I'm just like, that's because sometimes I'm like, oh, I kind of feel like rendering it like this today. Or let me try this method because I still haven't found the method that works the best for me. I'm just kind of like, I'll figure it out as I go. <laughs> And then the glass pane, what'll happen is now what I'm doing is I'm gonna find one of these sides. Like, okay, this is one side of my glass pane that I'm looking at right now. So what I'm gonna do now is with this single side, cause it is flat, say that my light source is coming from above. So now it kind of looks like that. Let's say it's fluorescent lighting. So we've got a pair of like tube lights coming from up there. That's when you would use these like strips is depending on how, or what kind of reflectivity is coming off of it. Cool, works. Now that we have this piece of glass, we're not done here because some of y'all wanted it to be broken. And the fun thing with that, we don't have to change much. Let's pick out the areas that we want to be broken. Let's say you've got like some streaks that we want down the middle. What we're gonna do is we're gonna make two layers. One layer, we're gonna draw the same color as our lightest highlight. Let's say that this glass is like just completely broken in the center like this. Cracks are more likely to happen in triangles. So try not to have any rectangular shapes when you're cracking glass. This looks pretty good, not too bad. We could leave it at this, but there's a fun thing that we can do that makes it look just a little bit nicer. So let's say we took this, let's copy this layer, put it underneath, move it over just a little bit, lock it so we can't change it. And let's pick the color of our deepest shadow or one of our deepest shadows. And let's just adjust it a little bit. Got the areas that we want. Maybe add some darkness to this side or there's no light source here. 
Now this is a section I do have rhyme or reason for. <laughs> So this is a nice, easy way to make cracked glass. Now, celled glass, a lot easier. <laughs> I'm not gonna bother to, <laughs> to try and clean this up more. <laughs> I'm just saying that right now. So, let's say that we start with this. Filling the areas that need to be filled. Let's say we got this right now. All we've gotta do is just do that and then just our little glass like that. That's easy enough. There's nothing crazy that goes along with that. Cell shaded glass isn't too bad. Like obviously the shading itself, like the, the highlights themselves will change depending on where your light source is coming from, what light sources you have. I'm just going like, oh, there's like tube lights and we're looking down on it. That's what my thought process is. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna draw in these and then I'm gonna use an eraser that's soft and just erase the ends a little bit. So they're not super harsh. There we go. Nice and easy. Don't need to render anything. So let's say we took that. We wanted to crack this. All right, and let's say that we've got some cracks going on here. The fun thing about cell shaded shadows is that they actually look better if you don't really add that much depth to them. So personally, I just kind of like leaving them like this, if that's the vibe that I'm going for. But it's really up to you. Join a virtual class to learn live from our professional artists. Get creative assignments, individual guidance, and real-time feedback on your artwork. Start today and level up your practice. If you learn something new, like and share this with a fellow art nerd. If you love receiving quality and free arts education, subscribe. Here's a couple other videos you can check out next.